I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. That's commonly called IPF. IPF is a slowly progressive disease, and in this disease, the lungs actually fill slowly with scar material. It's a progressive disease, as I mentioned. Now, that's a lot of large words. What does it mean to you as a patient that might have this disorder? Well, most patients first notice that they have shortness of breath. Simple activities that they used to be able to do, like climbing a flight or two of stairs, suddenly, or slowly, I should say, more likely over time, become more difficult. Maybe you're more short of breath when you're carrying groceries or laundry. You'll also may notice that you have an unexplained cough that persists and persists. Now, those symptoms are nonspecific. There are hundreds of diseases that can cause that. And generally, a patient will go to their general doctor who will obtain a chest x-ray and lung function tests, and those tests will show abnormalities. The chest x-ray may be followed up by a CT scan of the chest. And what we'll notice on the CT scan are shadows, or on the chest x-ray we'll notice shadows, that is this scar material accumulating in the lungs. Usually it starts at the bottom of the lungs and the outside and slowly fills towards the center and upward. At that point, it really is quite important to see a specialist that has expertise in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. At the Mayo Clinic, we have six of my colleagues and myself that see hundreds of patients a year with this disorder and related disorders. Why is a specialist important? Several things. First of all, there are over 260 interstitial diseases that might be confused with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. IPF may be confused with other diseases. It could be that your lungs are not the culprit. It could be that you're having heart insufficiency. So it's really up to us to visit with you and to sort out whether you've been exposed to a drug, an environmental challenge, something you might have been exposed to in the work environment, or even in the household or in nature that may have triggered a reaction. Then we need to decide, is this IPF or one of the other diseases uh, that looks like IPF? How do we do that? Most of the time, but not always, that can be accomplished with the CAT scan, a very thin section CAT scan specialized to look for these diseases. On occasion, we need to do additional testing such as bronchoscopic sampling or even a surgical-based lung biopsy. At the present time to diagnose IPF, most patients can be diagnosed with CT scan history, physical examination, and the lung function and blood testing. But sometimes we do need to do a biopsy to be certain. What about treatment options? Well, unfortunately for IPF, we don't have a medicine that will make it go entirely away. And the other bad news is that the disease might get worse over time, and in most patients it does. However, what we do have to offer is really uh, quite a lot of new potential therapies, and a lot of these are being studied in clinical trials. At the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, we are fully engaged in the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis research network across the country. That's a National Institute of Health program that offers clinical trials for this disorder. In addition, we're engaged in a wide number of pharmaceutical-based trials to bring you the most recent treatments, the most up-to-date opportunities for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. In some patients, the, de the disease does progress, and lung transplantation might also become an option. We can offer that also. I think what we have to offer the most is that you will have a partner to work through this disease with you, and that's what we offer in our practice of the Interstitial Lung Disease Clinic at Mayo Clinic Rochester. It's a complex disease. It can be quite scary. We're there to bring you the very best there is to offer to help you with this process. Thank you.